A sexual predator, an ill-reputed pope, and an emperor who let his kingdom decay and use its wealth for gambling, Pope John XII is unquestionably one of the worst, if not the worst, popes of all time. Although history is filled with people who were never true to their position in society, Pope John is the most remembered when it comes to being morally depraved. In this video, we will reveal the filthy deeds of Pope John that you will never learn in history books. John was born Alberic II of Spoleto, a self-proclaimed prince of Rome and a woman about whom historians are not sure. He was given the name Octavian at birth. The reality is a bit doubtful if you're wondering why his mother is not known. According to historians, John's mother may have been one of two people. She may have been his father's unidentified concubine, which is already pretty scandalous. However, others assert that Alda of Vienne was his mother, a woman Alberic married for political alliance purposes. The disturbing fact about this is that Alda was his own stepsister. Whatever the case may be, John's life had some shady beginnings, and from here, things only get worse. The boy's name was chosen because John's family had high hopes for him. They named him Octavian, not only due to this being the personal name of the earliest Roman emperor, Augustus Caesar, but since it was the name of an old Etruscan prince too. It was clear that John's family expected him to establish a powerful and long-lasting dynasty. John ended up achieving this goal, though probably not in a way that made them proud. John became a prince and a pope simultaneously at 17 only. John got the chance to meet his destiny quickly. When his father died of a fever in the fall of 954, he was probably 16 years old. Prior to this, John's father requested the nobles of Rome to swear an oath to him, promising John the papal throne if it became vacant. John's fate was sealed when the nobles, who adored John's father, took the oath. The decision to grant John the papacy was swiftly followed by a disastrous outcome. John was incredibly young when he became pope. He may have been as young as 17 years old. He also inherited his father's position as Prince of Rome, which gave him great influence, wealth, and power, making things even more difficult. Therefore, it came as no surprise that he quickly lost it all. He appointed a 10-year-old boy Bishop of Todi. John did not take long to start ruining things for himself and the empire. He immediately went to war with some terrifying Italian dukes who seized the former papal lands, but he was defeated. John did not do this because of his care for the papacy. Instead, it was all fun and games for him. Prior to becoming Pope, he had shown no interest in spiritual matters, and he was not likely to change his mind now, due to just having a strange pointed hat on his head. John stated that he enjoyed gambling, drinking, sleeping around, and hunting. In fact, he once ridiculed the papacy by naming a 10-year-old boy Bishop of Todi. In the early Middle Ages, life expectancy was lower, but even among the peasant class, a 10-year-old was still a child. So why exactly did he appoint the youngster? The answer is plain and simple. Money. The boy was the son of a wealthy family. They offered John a few gold purses, and John was happy to accept them. John was also Pope, so there was no way to argue with him about any decision he made. He appointed a deacon in a stable. John always welcomed cash for offices, according to his former employees in the Lateran Council which he used to buy alcohol, gamble, and hire prostitutes. However, his decision to ordain a deacon in his stable of horses was even worse an offence than ordaining a 10-year-old boy. The Bishop of Todi was, as far as we know, ordained in a church with all the proper rituals and formalities. His proud parents would have demanded nothing less, considering how much they had to pay for the position. But the lowest point was really a horse stable. The stables that John selected for the ceremony held no religious significance. The entire purpose of churches as holy spaces and the house of God was undermined by the ordination of a deacon outside of a church. In addition, John's obsession with hunting was one of his main flaws as Pope, and the incident shows his priorities in a microcosm. The medieval church tried to stop hunting because it was seen as a wasteful activity that encouraged sin and took time away from praying. John performed the blasphemous ceremony in front of prominent Catholic priests without regard for their opinions. Pope John slept with his sisters and niece. Following in his father's footsteps, John's sexual appetites were so strong that he didn't even stop at his own family. 
Keep in mind that as Pope, he was free to do whatever he wanted without running into trouble. As a result, John decided to sleep with women who were strictly forbidden to him because he was sick of having any woman he wanted. This particular act of incest was mentioned in a long list of complaints about his wrongdoings made by John's many enemies. It's possible that these complaints were exaggerated or that they were the result of rumors and gossip. It was common for John to hail Lucifer in public. Gambling was one of John's greatest sins. He would sell offices, steal money from pious Christians who had donated it, or raid the huge treasure chest at the Vatican to pay for his particularly expensive addiction. Gambling is an immoral hobby even for a priest, especially when it is funded by corruption and theft. However, John's practice of asking for luck from Venus and Jupiter instead of a saint was the icing on his rotten cake. His disbelief in God is certainly out of the question now. It's absolutely clear that he was uninterested in Catholic theology. When he was out drinking, he went one step further than asking pagan gods for help. Instead, he would frequently lead others in toasts to Satan, the biggest enemy of God. His habit of publicly praising Lucifer set an awful example for his crowd and was the most embarrassing thing for the church, particularly the people who elected him. Pope John turned Vatican Palace into a brothel. As we have seen, the problem with papal infallibility is that the Pope can do whatever they want. When a responsible man is elected, or when the papacy has, at best, an advisory role in global affairs, this is not as problematic. However, in John's time, evil popes could abuse this privilege by using their spiritual and military might to silence critics. There was really nothing anyone could do to stop John from behaving badly. He even turned the Vatican Palace into a brothel without being stopped. Palaces, by their very nature, are built magnificent and massive to entertain a huge number of people while they are on important missions. However, in the hands of monarchs like John, the numerous rooms built to accommodate diplomats and world leaders also served to accommodate concubines. John invited an unidentified number to live in his house rather than searching the streets of Rome for an attractive prostitute. In what must be the grandest brothel in history, he and his horse friends from the gambling dens, hunting parties, and boozers could amuse themselves at once. Rome was falling apart and John just didn't care. John had little time to devote to spiritual matters because he was so preoccupied with his favorite immoral pursuits. The cost of gambling, drinking, hiring prostitutes, and hunting was also very obvious. The funds that John stole from Vatican stores and private donations were supposed to be used to maintain Rome's ancient monasteries and churches. These ecclesiastic structures either fell into disrepair or were completely abandoned due to the lack of funds for necessary maintenance. Many people also claimed that John was a pyromaniac who enjoyed setting buildings on fire. There is no mention of churches being burned, so it's possible that even John wasn't so carefree. However, the smoke and flames from the buildings he did burn wouldn't have helped the damaged churches nearby. Pope John sexually assaulted women who came to pray at church and justified it by saying only God knows the reason for his doing. Most people don't even think of violence or sex when entering a church. Since ancient Greece, sacred locations have served as safe havens for even seasoned criminals. However, during the 10th century in Rome, worshippers had to be careful when entering St. Peter's because the Pope himself was hidden behind the pillars, ready to seize anyone who caught his attention and force them out if necessary. Under John's rule, people learned to be cautious about entering St. Peter's, which proved to be not only morally but also economically wrong. In addition to the undeniable immorality of sexual assault, John's behavior started deterring people from praying and leaving donations, according to the Lateran Council. Worst of all, the lucrative trade in European pilgrims began to slow down. Going on a pilgrimage to Rome was only possible for the wealthiest individuals, who would not only take advantage of the city's services and accommodations, but also give generously to the church. By stating that only God knows the reason for his behavior, John scared off these potential donors and political allies. He was also attracted to men and ordered procurement. John posed a threat to more than just women. In Catholics, homosexuality is often still viewed as a disgrace. The issue of homosexuality continues to be controversial in the modern Catholic Church, 
Therefore, you can only imagine how anti-gay the church of the 10th century was and how surprised it must have been to learn that Pope John XII, the head of the church, was fond of young men. In point of fact, he was also accused of hosting homosexual orgies and housing male concubines in the Vatican Palace to satisfy all of his desires. John would send his servants out to find men who met his aforementioned criteria whenever he decided he needed a new lover, or when his stock of male concubines had become bored with him and escaped. It's hard to tell how true the story about John's relationships with other men is, as it is with the majority of the accusations made against him. After all, in his day, one of the worst insults was being accused of homosexuality. Alternatively, historians have proposed that John took his inspiration from Roman emperors, many of whom were known to be bisexual. He gave a widow control of several cities to sleep with her. Even though John could sexually assault churchgoers and choose from most of Rome's population, some people were just too powerful and obvious to give in to his lustful desires. According to the allegations leveled against him, it is known that he slept with two widows. However, one of these women was only seduced at a great cost. One of the widows was able to make use of John's frequent advances to her advantage by noticing his amazing sexual appetite and megalomania. The woman was in high demand because she was the widow of a powerful aristocrat and had significant power and authority. As a result, the Pope's usual strategies wouldn't work so she could reject John until he gave her control of several Italian cities and the drooling prince was happy to favour her to sleep with her. Along with the numerous other allegations of paying for sex and baratry, this particular charge is plausible. Pope John only spent on himself. Rome became John XII's personal playground, with money from the church and the power of his aristocratic position at his disposal. John was protected from threats to his life because he paid well for his own security guards. In the meantime, John slept with women all over the place and gave his favourites money and land. For a while, he happily carried out his heists, but outside of Rome, there was a dark threat to his rule. He made efforts to make his ally the king of his empire. John requested assistance from Germany's King Otto I in the year 960. Otto was fundamentally John's opposite. John deliberately divided his own people, whereas Otto united an entire kingdom on his own. John is said to have accepted the offerings that pilgrims had left behind in his cathedrals, while Otto was a shining example of virtue. John welcomed Otto into Rome with open arms when he agreed to meet with him, despite the unflattering comparisons. He was aware that he needed Otto and his men. However, the assistance had a price. Berengar, another rival, met Otto on the battlefield in 961 before he even entered Rome. John was delighted when Otto prevailed over the two in a fight. In 962, Otto went to Rome, where Pope John XII was waiting. John was very happy to meet Otto, so much so that he promised to make him emperor in exchange for his protection. It should have been a brilliant political move for John, but he made a fatal mistake. Despite Otto's efforts to save them, Rome's residents didn't approve of the idea of an outsider being welcomed into their city. John's promise to make Otto emperor probably made him even less popular with his people. He died the same way he lived. Pope John XII passed away on May 14, 964. Various accounts dispute how he died. One claims that he died of a stroke as a result of too much excitement while having sex with a married woman, while the other claims that he died of internal bleeding as a result of being beaten up by the husband of the married woman after he discovered them in bed together. Regardless, Pope John XII died the same way he had lived, covered in sex, blood and disgrace, slandering St. Peter's chair and papal office, bringing the papacy to the lowest point in its two millennia of existence. He was only 27 years old. If you're a history fanatic like us, like this video and subscribe to our channel.